We're all broken. There's no question about that. The question these days is how well can you hide it? Because society has this pervasive fear of being broken, as though it were shameful or contagious. You've heard the comments. I wouldn't date her, dude. She's damaged goods. That guy has major baggage. You can't fix him. At some point during adulthood, I became a pro at hiding my brokenness. To me, that meant drawing as little attention to myself as possible, wearing a solid color palette of black and gray and tan, never making a scene, never giving anyone the opportunity to think, what is wrong with that girl? It's funny because as a teenager, I had no problem standing out. In high school, I dyed my hair electric orange. I wore purple combat boots. I sang solos in the choir. It wasn't cool, but that wasn't the point. It was better to be a freak than to be a nobody. Then I moved to New York City to attend NYU, and I was swallowed up in this sea of overwhelming personalities and massive talent. I was miserable there, so after a year, I came home to Los Angeles and I graduated from USC where I learned that abandoning uniqueness and being a nobody actually has its advantages. Don't get me wrong, I love my alma mater, but the University of Spoiled Children isn't exactly <laughs> the pinnacle of diversity. Who knows how long I would have gone on like that, trying to go unnoticed, to be small and never need anything from anyone. I was not headed down the road to greatness. So in December of 2013, the universe decided it had to intervene and it broke me so completely I couldn't hide it any longer. I was involved in a hit and run that left me in the hospital for two weeks. Um, I had burst fractures in three of my lumbar vertebrae, three broken ribs, a broken sternum, and my left ankle was crushed. There was no hiding this. It was on the local news and in the newspapers. My family plastered it all over social media. I was mortified. I went from a wheelchair to a walker to a cane to a limp. I wore a miserable metal contraption on my torso for months. Yeah, people stared. Everyone told me I was so lucky I hadn't been killed. But to me, this new existence of needing help to go to the bathroom and bathe myself and do practically everything except breathe felt like death. A year and a half later, there's still moments where it feels like death when the pain is particularly bad, and so my limp, or as I like to call it, my gangsta lean, <laughs> is worse than usual when I can't do a yoga pose because of fusion in my spine. It's taken me quite a while to see the good in what happened that day, and trust me, it's an ongoing process. There's this art form in Japan. It's called kintsugi, which means golden joinery. They take broken pottery and repair it using gold lacquer, and the result is something even more beautiful and more valuable than it was before it was broken. Uh, these artists, to these artists, being broken is not a misfortune, it's an opportunity to become something greater. And for me, it's not something to hide. These flaws make me me, they give me character. The universe gave me a profound gift that day, the tools to become a more compassionate and authentic doctor. It was exactly what I needed because I wouldn't have been able to really help anyone else heal when I was so ashamed of my own scars. When you're healing from a trauma, people call it recovery, but my healing has not been a recovery. I'm not regaining something that was lost. It's a discovery. I'm unearthing a new version of myself that is more beautiful and more valuable for having been broken. Thank you.